Hello Newtonians! In this video, we are going to learn about tolerances in engineering drawing. We are going to look at what are tolerances and reasons for size variations. Furthermore, we are going to learn the basic terminology of tolerances, how we can add them to the drawing, and what general tolerances are. Additionally, we are going to talk about the scope of applying the tolerances, factors that we need to take into account when choosing tolerances, and a general framework on how to choose them. For young mechanical design engineers, engineering tolerances are probably the most challenging topic regarding drawing creation, but they are definitely worth learning. In my previous video, Dimensions in Engineering Drawing Explained, we learned about the main elements of dimensioning and about defining the object's shape and form using different dimensioning methods. But in order to fully understand the dimensioning concept, we must learn about the engineering tolerances and how to correctly specify them on the engineering drawing. What are tolerances? The main intention of the engineering drawings is to communicate design intent in language that is clear and understandable for manufacturing personnel. In other words, the whole design process, from idea, concept sketches, CAD modeling and drawing creation is done with the intent to manufacture physical component. But the problem is that we cannot manufacture anything to its exact dimensions as defined on the drawing. It is just impossible to do it. But in order to make sure that despite these inconsistencies in the manufacturing process, we still can fit multiply different components in functional assembly, we have to allow dimensional variation. The permissible variation of a dimension is called tolerance. The tolerancing can be divided into two groups. Plus minus tolerances. Geometrical and positional tolerances. In this video, we will look into the basics of the plus minus tolerances. Reasons for size variations. Let us now investigate one simple example. Imagine a wood plank 1.5 meter long that we would like to cut with the saw on 1.2 meter. We take a measuring tape and mark where we want to cut. After we are finished with the cutting, we measure the plank, and the plank is slightly shorter than 1.2 meter. We are scratching our heads, completely confused. Why was this plank shorter when we measured it? Let us analyze what could have gone wrong. It could be that the surface that we used for measuring is not entirely straight. When we measure from the bottom side of the surface, we get a shorter plank than when we would measure it from the top side of the surface. When we were marking where we wanted to measure, we measured it directly on 1.2 meter or slightly left or the right from the 1.2 meter mark on the measuring tape. Was our pen sharp or blunt? Did we draw the cutting line straight, parallel to the cutting path? Did we cut with the saw directly following the line, or did we move the saw blade slightly to the side to compensate for the saw thickness? As you can see from the example before, for a simple plank cutting process, many variables could influence the final size of our plank. Now try to correlate this example with a much more complex manufacturing process than would plank cutting with a handsaw. Some of the reasons for the size variations. Geometric accuracy of machine tools. Deflection and vibration of a workpiece. Tool deflection and tool wear. Error due to clamping. Alignment errors. Structural deformation etc. As we can see, there are many reasons why manufactured component dimensions could differ from the defined dimensions on the drawing. Basic Terminology The plus-minus tolerances relate to the linear and angular dimensions. Like everything is defined on the engineering drawings by standard, the basic terminology for the tolerances is defined by standard ISO 286 to 12010. The tolerances are defined after the dimensional value. They can be defined with the signs plus, zero, minus and plus or minus. The dimension of a feature on the component lies between the two limit deviations. Let us now take a look into the graphical representation of the tolerances. Nominal size, n, dimension of the feature defined on the drawing. This dimension represents the dimension of the feature with the ideal form, marking with the letter n is no longer in use, but for easier understanding, we will use it. Actual size is determined by measuring the defined dimension after it has been manufactured. Upper limit of size, ULS, is the larger permitted size of the two limit sizes. Lower limit of size, LLS, is the smaller permitted size of the two limit sizes. Upper limit deviation, ES uppercase, for holes, ES lowercase, for shafts, is defined as upper limit minus the nominal size. Lower limit deviation, EI uppercase, for holes, EI lowercase, for shafts, is defined as lower limit minus the nominal size. Fundamental tolerance, IT, the difference between the upper limit deviation and lower limit deviation. Tolerance is an absolute value. 
If we would define the nominal value as 75 mm with a tolerance range plus or minus 10 mm, our final product can be manufactured in the range between 65 and 85 mm. Entry of the tolerances on the drawing. When defining the tolerances on the engineering drawing, we can enter them in a few different ways. Limit dimension. We can specify tolerances on the drawing in the way that instead of the nominal size and the limit deviation, we enter the upper limit of size, ULS, and the lower limit of size, LLS. We could also have the case when one of the limit deviations equals zero. When the upper limit of size is equal to the nominal size, then ULS equals N, ES uppercase slash ES lowercase equals zero. When the lower limit of size is equal to the nominal size, then LLS equals N, EI uppercase slash EI lowercase equals zero. Unequal bilateral tolerance. The unequal bilateral tolerances specify a nominal value and the limit deviations. There are three possible cases. The first case is when the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase greater than zero and EI uppercase slash EI lowercase less than zero. The second case is when the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase is greater than zero and EI uppercase slash EI lowercase is greater than zero. The third case when the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase is less than zero and EI uppercase slash EI lowercase is less than zero. Equal bilateral tolerancing. The equal bilateral tolerances specify a nominal value and the limit deviations when the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase equals EI uppercase slash EI lowercase. Unilateral tolerancing. The unilateral tolerances specify a nominal value and the limit deviation in one direction only. There are two possible cases. In the first case the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase is greater than zero and EI uppercase slash EI lowercase equals zero. In the second case the ES uppercase slash ES lowercase equals zero and EI uppercase slash EI lowercase is less than zero. General tolerances. In order to simplify and improve the clarity of the drawing and speed up the drafting process, we are not defining every single tolerance on the drawing. We can refer to the tolerancing standard relevant to the dimensions that do not have limit deviations called out. We are usually referring to these tolerances as general tolerances. The general tolerances can be overridden by defining local tolerance to the dimension. One of the standards we can use is ISO 2768 to 11989. ISO 2768 to 11989 defines general tolerances of linear and angular tolerances for the manufacturing methods involving cutting and forming. For other manufacturing methods, general tolerances are defined with different standards. The ISO 2768-1-1989 contains four different tolerances classes, fine, F, medium, M, coarse, C, and very coarse, V. We can write general notes on the drawing or refer to the standard in the title block. For form and position, general tolerances were defined by ISO 2768-2-1989. This standard was withdrawn, but most engineers are still using this standard. This standard defines three classes, H, K, and L, in the drawing title block. For that reason, you can often see remarks, ISO 2768, MK, ISO 2768, class medium, and ISO 2768-2 class K. As stated above, ISO 2768-2-1989 was withdrawn and it was replaced with ISO 2208-1-2021. We have a small plate with two holes and a chamfer on every edge. As you can see, we did not define any tolerances on dimensions. But that does not mean that we don't have defined tolerances on the drawing. We can see in our title block that we are referring to the ISO 2768 MK standard for general tolerances. That means that all of these dimension tolerances are defined by ISO 2768 medium class tolerances. If we would look at our table defined by ISO 2768 to 1989, we can see that the length of the plate has a tolerance of plus or minus 0.3 millimeters and that our chamfers have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. That way, you can check for every dimension on the drawing in which the tolerance range is defined. The reason why we need to define general tolerancing standard on the drawings is because of fact that the drawing is a legally binding document. Imagine that you do not define the general tolerancing standard on the drawing, and your supplier is working with his standard of tolerances. His standard of tolerances is approximately around plus or minus 35 millimeters. And then, you receive a component not with a length of 100 millimeters, but with 135 millimeters. And you cannot get a refund or rework for the component because your supplier has a legal document to prove that you did not specify the tolerance range. 
If you have the general tolerance and standard statement on the drawing, the story is drastically changing in your favor. Scope of the applying tolerances. In this video, we discuss the plus minus tolerances. But in order to get a complete understanding of the tolerancing and to properly define the features form, size, orientation, and location on an object, it is necessary to acquire knowledge of. One of the most important considerations when applying tolerances is fit. The fit refers to the mating of two mechanical components. In other words, two different components are in some kind of relationship with each other, and using fits, we are making sure that this relationship is defined correctly. In order to define the features form, orientation, and location on an object, you need to familiarize yourself with the Geometrical Product Specification, ASME Standard Name, Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing, GDNT. Using geometrical and positional tolerances, we can define the relationships between different features on an object, and we can establish what features are used to specify the origin of measurement. After we created a drawing and defined all the dimensions and tolerances, somehow, we had to check if our tolerances were specified correctly. We need a numerical answer to the questions. Will the shaft fit into the bearing? Can we fit two plates in the groove? What is the worst case biggest length of the plate etc.? We can answer these questions by performing a tolerance analysis and tolerance stackup. All the topics listed above are done before the component is manufactured. In order to round up all this knowledge, the last puzzle is to understand what happens with the component after it is manufactured. Different component inspection methods are used to determine if the component was correctly manufactured. Factors to take into account when choosing tolerances. When choosing tolerances for a part, mechanical designers take into account a variety of factors, including functionality, the part must be able to perform its intended function within the specified tolerances. For example, if the part is a bearing, it must be able to rotate freely within the specified tolerance. Manufacturing process, the tolerances must be achievable with the manufacturing process being used. For example, a tolerance of 0.025 mm may be achievable with CNC machining but not with casting. Cost, tighter tolerances may require more precise and expensive manufacturing processes, which can increase the cost of the part. The designer must balance the need for tight tolerances with the cost of the part. Assembly, the part must be able to fit and function properly with other parts in the assembly. The designer must consider the assembly tolerances and ensure that the part's tolerances are compatible. Material, the material properties also play a role in determining tolerances. For example, a part made of a brittle material may require tighter tolerances than one that is more ductile. Industry standards. The designer must consider industry standards and regulations that may apply to the part, such as tolerance standards set by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, or the International Organization for Standardization, ISO. Experience. The experience and expertise of the designer also play a role in determining tolerances. An experienced designer will better understand what tolerances are achievable and what is necessary for the part to function properly. In general, the designer will consider all of these factors and make a trade-off between the cost, functionality, and manufacturability when choosing the tolerances for a part. The designer will also consult with the manufacturing team to ensure that the tolerances are achievable and that the part can be manufactured efficiently. How to choose tolerances on the part When choosing engineering tolerances, no hard rule is written on how to do it. Everybody has a different approach, different skills, and experience levels. Here is the approach that I take. Define functional and non-functional dimensions. Define the areas of interest for the part in a question and connect those areas with the other parts influencing this area. Usually, I would print the drawings and do the tolerancing for interconnected parts simultaneously. If you are not familiarized with this concept, make sure to watch video, Dimensions in Engineering Drawing Explained. Analyze the materials of different interconnected parts. This also includes analyzing the environmental requirements for the parts, for example, environment temperature. Analyze the manufacturing process of the part. Define the correct standard for general tolerances based on the chosen manufacturing process, for example, ISO 2768 to 11989. Usually, non functional dimensions would be defined with general tolerances. Analyze general tolerances and loosen up the tolerances that can be loosened up. Analyze the functional dimensions. Define the tolerances and define the fits where they are required. If necessary, define geometrical and positional tolerances, geometrical product specification or geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, GDNT. Perform the tolerance analysis and tolerance stackup. 
it is impossible to create a component with the exact dimensions as defined on the engineering drawing. There are many reasons for that, and to ensure that we can fit multiple components together despite the manufacturing error, deviations are allowed. These deviations we call tolerances. Specifying correct tolerances to ensure that components fit together can be complicated. In order to properly define a feature's form, size, orientation, and location on an object, it is necessary to acquire extensive knowledge about tolerances. These could be discouraging for young mechanical design engineers, but these concepts can be mastered with the proper guidance, persistence, and lots of learning and practice. I would suggest you study tolerances vigorously. A proper understanding of tolerances will make your professional life much easier. Did you learn anything new in this video? Let us know in the comments below. Do you like our videos? Then, give us a thumb up, comment, and share it with your friends, colleagues, and on your social media channels. And if you want to become a part of the Newtonians, make sure to subscribe to our channel.